Welcome to today's webinar. We are very excited to present uh, today's content very re relevant to current um, period, very uh, special period about COVID-19, how it has uh, currently drastically impact on the outlook of international student market. Um, so before that, we're going to quickly do a couple of housekeeping stuff. So the webinar is scheduled for one hour. Uh, the main content will be around 45 minutes. We're going to leave about 15 minutes for any question um, from, from the attendees. Um, so, but feel free to send over your question on the chat box throughout the presentation, and then we will answer it towards the end. The other thing is you have any trouble of hearing or seeing the presentation, you can use the function to raise your head on the, on the panel here. Uh, we will try to resolve as soon as possible. So to start with, I'm going to introduce today's speakers. So Dominica, uh, who's going to quickly introduce uh, uh, Emerging Communication shortly, uh, she has 20 years of experience in uh, working in clients and agency side. Her knowledge and um, passion on China has helped lots of clients to really successfully engage with Chinese consumers. The other key speaker we have today is Rocky. Um, she heads up uh, Emerging Communication Consultancy and R&D department. She's also our lead consultant on the education sector. On top of that, she's a regular speaker and also contributor on a lot of top education uh, publications. So I'm going to move on this to uh, Dominica to give you a, a quick intro. Hi, good morning everybody and thanks very much for those that have just joined us. I know that there are some that are on another webinar and a little bit late. We will be recording this session so don't worry. So just to give a little bit of context as to who we are at Emerging Communications and how we've helped universities in the last six years, we're a full service consultancy um, agency and marketing consultancy based here in London and in Shanghai. We essentially split the business into three divisions. We have the division that most of you will be familiar with from any agency, where we plan channels, we content plan, and we also are responsible for delivering content across all platforms, whether that be search or whether that be social. But in addition to that, which is quite rare, is we're also an offline specialist as well. With universities, it's absolutely paramount that we integrate any of your activity in market with your sales teams, such as events and exhibitions, in addition to ensuring that the entire sales journey for your students, parents, alumni and industry is very, very seamless. And to that end, we do an awful lot of training, around masterclasses, webinars, as well as bespoke training for universities. And in fact, as a follow on from this webinar, I will be running a podcast next week, which I'll talk about a little bit later. And we also have a very robust consultancy division, which Rocky's team run. Our approach is quite different to that of other consultancy and practices and agencies in as much that in order to be competitive in this market, and it is probably the most competitive market in the world now, education in the UK. We are in a fantastic position with the way that the US is positioning itself, especially around COVID, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But it's very, very important that everybody on this call and everybody who listens to this later, you're all part of a completely different competitive set. And so what we do is we work with the universities to work out where you can truly shine, where you are as a university or as a faculty or as a college and where you can actually be competitive. And we're very honest with our universities as to what that looks like so that we know exactly what students and what parents you're going to engage with, with what content on what channels at what time. It's not just a question of taking your Western platforms and basically translating that content and Rocky will explain more. It's very, very important. There is a strategic plan around what you do so that your offer holders then convert into students, then convert into advocacy. So I'm now going to hand over to Rocky, um, who is going to now talk about how you as a university can set the scene and can differentiate yourselves at this very, very hard time so that it can impact on your 2020 and 21 recruitment. And I'll speak to you all later. Many thanks. Hi everyone, morning, this is Rocky. I'm gonna start today's um, session with the 
the overall impact for on both sides um, for UK universities and non Chinese students. Um, in, in, in 2018, the UK overtook the US for the very first time and became the number one desired destination of prospective Chinese students and their families. And it's also, also worth mentioning the number of tier four student visa issued to Chinese students nearly doubled the number in seven years. Um, especially in the past three years, the Chinese students market has grown by 34 percent and hit a record high um, number according as you can see very clear on this chart. It's also worth mentioning that um, more and more Chinese students are coming to the UK for undergrad study. Um, we got the latest data from British Council for 2020 intake. Um, we've reached a record high number of applications from Chinese students via UCAS. Um, the reason I'm highlighting here is their families for 2020 intake, those overholders and applicants for UG programs in the UK, their families are worried. And they are as a family, they're making their decisions on whether they, they shall still go with the original plan. Um, for every single university who's recruiting Chinese students, the potential loss in combination could be really high. It could mean a 10% fall in enrollments from China this year could make, could make um, about 200 million pounds in total or even more in lost tuition fees. Um, so the potential loss is huge. However, it's 148, uh, 44, uh, sorry, 105.54 UK universities are on the same boat together, no matter how popular some university are or have been among Chinese students, none of them can be the exception in the current context. Um, in terms of the impact on Chinese students, um, I just want to highlight in here, Chinese students suffer the most during this period compared to any, any international market, any other international student group, because it's began from the very beginning of 2020. Uh, in January, when the outbreak started in China, um, then they were, they were noticed that there's no more language uh, else exam allowed um, from February. And in March, the outbreak, when the outbreak start in the UK, they started to worry about, you know, whether they can, they can stick to their original plan. And now we are reaching the April when everything is still pending, a new regulation coming every, every single day and bad news coming every single day. So Chinese applicants and overholders have been through a lot since the very beginning of the year and still in panic. Uh, about whether they can come to the UK and to get on their processional course and even term one on time. Um, the anxiety of their social media is where Chinese students express their anxiety and worries. Um, these are real screen grab my team found on uh, Weibo talking about the impact of the ELS test cancellation. Um, they are sharing their worries and they're discussing them every day. Um, and also the, the closure of UK visa application centers across China. Um, the closure started uh, late January, I believe, and it's still there's no more further notification or announcement of when would it be open again. And it seriously impact for those who already um, kind of plan to to come for longer precessional courses, which would be start in June. So now it's in the critical stage. Um, on another note, um, a survey of 100 agencies, uh, education agencies across um, the country, across China, carried out by Beijing Overseas Study Service Association um, has shown some result um, from agents' perspective as they are you know, the direct contact with majority of um, Chinese students. So two thirds of 
the agency survey say they do not think students will change their overall plan um, for this year, um, but they may postpone their enrollment. Um, but but most most students will not abandon their study abroad programs. Um, but the survey was carried out um, earlier in um, March. So the situation is currently constantly changing. So April to June is definitely the critical time. How university act in this time will, will, will determine like your retention of um, the, the, your students and offer holders for the 2020 intake. So just quickly wrap up the, the, the first section. So I just explained the overall impact on UK University, where you need to be aware and how critical this stage is and why Chinese students deserve, you know, more, more care should be taken additional care and then attention from you as they've been through a lot. Um, so, and who are you as a university or, or, or uh, high-end education institute? Who are you currently having conversations with? I've been no doubt like, you know, every single university is trying to talk to their overholders and trying to convert them, like finally let them enroll for 2020 September intake. However, not just one group of Chinese students you need to take care of. The current students, um, I know some of them managed to back to China uh, after a really long journey and, and they're suffering um, in China of the, you know, the mandatory quarantine um, isolated from their families, stuck in the hotel. Um, they're worrying about whether they can graduate and they're worrying about how do they cope with, um, you know, seven hour difference on online learning and assessment. Um, and they will feel lack of access to uh, some, some online resource because of the VPN issue and lack of support. They're being isolated. For, for those who already back to China, especially PG students, they feel like, you know, their education journey suddenly stopped here. So, and for the current students who's still staying in the UK, um, they are extremely worried about health and safety. And if you think from their shoes, they've been far away from their family when the outbreak started and you know when 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 crazy in china and now they're suffering the same thing again um being isolated with their family they they, they got no one in here they're stuck in their dorm um and some of them has faced um uh, racist uh, or a violence case and they're, 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 they're anxious of the whole situation and they're being alone and some of them even don't have, you know, uh, access to daily necessities and they can't go back to China anymore because there's no flight available anymore. Um, now for 2020 prospects, they are worrying in China. Uh, so for them, they are lack of the clear information because as I mentioned, like the regulation and the university decision is changing every day. Uh, there's still no else test availability and the visa application is still uh, not happening. Um, so, and they're also worrying whether they're gonna get their documentation on time because their university in China is still closed. Um, so all of the uncertainty of 2020 intake and they are, you know, um, they're they're trying to see if they if they can still get a decent return of their efforts for the whole year trying to get in. Um, there is a very interesting saying goes on on um, on Chinese social media. Um, so COVID nineteen China plays the first half, the world plays second half, the overseas Chinese plays the whole game. Um, we are talking about more than two hundred thousand uh, Chinese students currently studying in the UK universities. Um, so the current Chinese students, um, the, um, they, some of them booked eight flight tickets by a different airline, uh, but they still, all of them got canceled. They stuck in here. Um, sometimes when they, they're, they're, when they put on their mask, uh, when they come to the street, they, they, they were, they feel like 
extremely insecure. Um, they worry about whether they will be in, um, whether there would be attacks or you know even violence cases. Um, and then for those who staying in here, um, they they don't want their parents to be worried. Um, they've got to stay strong without worrying their parents. And it seems everything is getting worse every day for them. Um, so the reason I'm, I highlight the current student, it's the Gen Z Chinese students. They are born in the social and digital age. They are literally broadcasting their current days in the UK now to everybody in, in China, to prospective students in China. To, 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 so the, these are real screen grabs I got from um, Weibo. So every single of them have become uh, what we call a um, key opinion, not key opinion leader, like um, became live streamers and became uh, floggers um, because they got, they got nothing to do apart from, you know, video in their life and um, so the, they're, they're videoing everything. Um, so whether as a university, this is a really critical stage, like whether you are offering sufficient support to Chinese students um, because they are just going to tell the truth on their um, self-made videos and then it's it's open on China Chinese platforms. Your prospective students will see it. They will see how the current students were being treated whether they receive um, support from university and you can't stop every single of them become influencers. Um, now I'm going to quickly go through the measures taken across the industry and then we can move to the final um, kind of like topic which is the, the, the most important topic for today's session. Um, so firstly the um, the situation has caught the attention of Chinese embassy um, and also they are doing, they're communicating with students, um, they've established hotlines um, have also for Chinese students from all university in the UK who have got Chinese students uh, and it's worth mentioning that only just yesterday um, they have made a decision of bringing those under 18 year old Chinese students uh, home. Um, we have about uh, 15,000 young Chinese students in the UK studying in primary school um, and high school up to high schools. A uh, quick summary of measures taken by UK universities. Uh, we've seen a lot of univer UK university uh, through the, the last month, especially have making every effort to support Chinese students in this critical moment, majorly for overholders. Uh, we've seen extended deadlines. We've seen more availability and flexibility in processional courses. Uh, we've seen alternative choices being made by university to take, you know, other language scores or even um, doing internal tests and um, seamlessly um, um, join the processional course. Uh, and we've seen a lot of online activities going on, a lot of dialogues going on. Um, so we know that every single university is trying their best. Uh, some of them have already made the decision to make processional course completely online. Uh, I think uh, Liverpool University and Bristol uh, have made their decision of moving the processional course completely online and they've made it very clear to their overholders for 2020. Um, in general, students' uh, attitude over online processional course are quite okay and positive um, because uh, we have to meet like for among all international students, Chinese are probably the most adaptive to online learning. Um, as long as, you know, the communication is clear, um, majority of students reaction on online presenter course is positive. So the harder the situation is really the more determined Chinese students are, they are going to, you know, commit to their original plan. So in terms, if you, by the way, if you have any question, just please uh, leave your question in the chat box. We're going to have have them all answered and wrap up. Um, so 
what about now and next? The forward thinking, as I mentioned before, um, for current students already back, don't think of you only need to communicate with your 2020 prospects because the way that you communicate with your current students are impacting your overall brand image. And it's really the time to showcase whether you care or not. And you can't stop um, those, those image built among prospects uh, who's making their decision, uh, who's making their choices in multiple offers on their hand. So for current students already back in China, um, you know, open dialogues, communication, keep in touch with them, give them remote support. Um, and uh, you can also establish um, some certain groups, like, you know, make sure that you communicate with those groups frequently and for the current students staying in the UK, the most important thing is support, both physical, physical and emotional support and building communities with them because I know every single university got Chinese Student Association. Are you talking to those association? Um, are you talking to your student ambassador if your ambassador is still in the UK? And social media engagement is key. You can even consider creating some hashtag uh, on, on Weibo to, to frequently to encourage the, those students to share their daily life with, with university. Um, and for 2020 prospects, overholders, applicants, um, I think open is the most important word. Open dialogues, open choices for them. And you need to demonstrate the outlook to them. Like even the worst case, the term one needs to completely go online. But don't forget the PSW visa. Like you need to draw them the outlook of the overall experience. They're even delayed by one term. They're still going to have a full experience in the UK and, you know, your career can showcase that your career support center is going to help them to get a decent intern and their PSW visa. So they're still going to have, in, even the even just PG program, they, they, they would have nearly three years of amazing experience in the UK. So it's really about, you know, the outlook. So, and also UK, just be confident because UK the, the the current situation would gone would be gone and UK is still a preferred destination for overseas study um, because of weaker sterling because two year PSW working visa and because what's going on with 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 Trump US and China uh, and also I know we I know some of the university has already participated in the great scholarship scheme uh, 2020 so as long as you're proactively engaging with Chinese students um, in the right way um, in this critical time, um, the, 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 yeah, everything will be, will be go back to normal. Um, so as I mentioned, um, last weekend, um, British Council launched a live streaming session on Weibo um, about to talk about not only the current status, but also the outlook of UK studying. It attracted more than 36,000 viewers online. Majority of them are students and parents who are preparing 2021 applications. So it's already on the way. Um, and also it's, it, these, it's the perfect time for every single university to build a brand to win Chinese students' heart. I know some of universities have launched special scholarship scheme to Hubei region students or frontline workers. And some universities have actioned really fast. When the outbreak first started only in China, um, they were sending warm letters to old Chinese alumni saying that you got them um, emotionally support. Um, so using it's really it's the time for you to think whether you're using your social Chinese social media channel as a notice board or are you having dialogues with students because some issues my team spotted um, you know with some UK university during the last months some of them are not replying to urgent questions on social media or not enough policy update on Chinese social media updating your policy on your UK official website would not help and also we've seen some case of you know lack of from lack of crisis management or lack of the sense of crisis management uh, I know one university um, you know have experienced um, 
you know, some Chinese students in one single university has experienced um, violence cases, and then the the related topic reached one more than one mil, 100 million views on Weibo. But it it the official announcement of of university um, delayed for a week. So in these critical stage, universities can take more action to reinforce students, make them feel safe and provide more benefits, well-being tips for the students stay in the UK. So as a summary for these academic year for 2020 intake, um, you need to think about, you know, practical measures because, uh, for example, majority of universities in China are still closed now. Uh, you can measure, consider accepting screenshots or electric um, versions of documentations and think about whether if they couldn't have their official um, transcript on time, what would be, be the measure? Uh, and let's be realistic um, because, um, you know, news are spreading really fast every single uh, every single day and Chinese students know that the situation in the UK will continue for another three to six months. So um, think in advance of the solution if the situation not going to get a getting any better in May, June. So the first term might completely change to online teaching or delayed enrollment. Um, and also what we've uncovered on social media is um, especially UG overholders. Um, they are seriously considering um, whether they can defer their offer um, for another um, for the next academic year and some of them are considering gap year. Gap year it's becoming more and more popular in China. So as a university, uh, have you given uh, your students choices of defer their offers? Because they, I've seen them worrying about it. They don't know whether they, they can ask uh, university proactively. Um, and also for the next year intakes, we, um, no doubt for 2021 um, intake, it would be, we would see a, the biggest booming um, because because of what's happening this year. And, um, but are you ready for that booming? Because it means that um, more competition um, and how you, you approach the, um, how, you, how you draw out your recruitment roadmap for 2021 strategically and how you work internally, integratedly ab across all departments, digital um, marketing, recruitment, international office, and how you segment your potential students. Um, have you spotted any new segments if you're not? Because segmentation is the only thing that can help you to, to cut through the noise um, through very fierce competition. And are you currently talking to your um, current UG students? Um, are you thinking about progress them into enroll to your PG program again? Uh, are, is there any commitment you can make to them? Is there any special scholarship or you know tuition fee or making them student ambassadors so they can stay with you? All those these sort of things. Uh, I'm gonna give. Um, the the um the microphone back to Dominica and so she will do the wrap up for today's session. Thanks. Thank you, Rocky. Not easy doing it in English. It's a sterling job. Thank you ever so much. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to those that have joined since I spoke at the beginning. I think one of the most critical things for a university always, but especially at the moment more now than ever, is integration of departments. I have yet to meet a university who doesn't have a very separate international team, in-market sales team, digital and marketing team. That's four teams all looking for Chinese students and all doing things in silo. It's those universities that sit down together, the international digital sales team in China, even agents, if they're particularly important, you have a number of one or two tier agents and they work out a roadmap together and they ensure that everything is seamless in terms of both the student funnel or application journey and also ensuring that every platform has got the same tone of voice and it's all seamless for your student whether they are studying with you or they are a prospect. It's absolutely critical to do this um, for a number of reasons. 
If you are separating out your communications, by way of example, you have a sales team who's answering applicants, constant questions at the moment on WeChat around um, IELTS being delayed, around whether or not they can defer an offer, or what do they do if they do have an offer and they can't get a flight to London, will you start the courses online before they can join you? There is going to be a steady stream of community management that's going to have to be happen, that's going to have to happen in market. And you need to ensure that your sales team, your Chinese team in market are working with you in marketing so there's a consistent message. But similarly, anything that you're going to be doing on your Chinese channels, um, particularly on Weibo, WeChat, Juhu, um, and all of the other social media medium, um, channels of outreach, you need to make sure that your message is consistent. Otherwise, it's going to be extremely confusing. And please don't forget alumni and do not forget your existing students who are either back in China or still um, not necessarily on campus in lessons at the moment, but are in isolation or in, in quarantine like we all are in our homes. You need to make sure that you're having a regular dialogue. It's how you communicate and how you use emotion and how you use empathy at this time that is going to really set you apart from your competitors. And the universities that are doing this well, that are integrating their teams, for, for want of a better word, for a crisis, crisis roadmap for 2020 recruitment, they're the ones that are shining through. And it's exceptionally important that any silos between teams, you, you, you have to get rid of that. That is not going to work. Um, one of the things that we've done, we've had an awful lot of universities come to us in the last 10 days, particularly, who are relatively small, who have limited financial um, um, budgets. And they basically said, Domenica, we can't afford for consultancy, but what we really need is some support at this time for our Chinese in-market sales team or for our marketing team here. So what we've put together is a package with our account management team where we will support universities for three days a month, offering a multitude of tactical services such as social monitoring and sentiment analysis. And what we mean by this is so that we can go back to the university and say, this is what your current students are saying about the university experience. This is what their concerns are. This is what your current applicant holders are trying to do and the, and the regular frequently asked questions on the community, on WeChat by way of example, that if you answered them, you would be managing to convert an awful lot of offer holders, as well as just translation, copywriting, support, community management, and we can do this on a timesheet basis. A lot of our university brands are not the big universities, they just need tactical support. So if you're interested in, in that, then please come back to me. The other thing that's worked particularly well for universities in 2019 and 18 for converting offer holders as well as prospects with a very short window, so we're now in April um, for September recruitment, is live streaming. Rocky talked about um, something the British Council did last week on Weibo, which was phenomenally successful. And we've had very good results. We've worked with a number of universities running live streaming events. So essentially where we can have members of the student community as well as faculty members and university members having conversations, we live stream that. Um, but we can still do that even with um, various individuals working out of different places and we invite questions from the audience. So it's a bit like a live webinar. Can you go back to two please and I'll, I'll thank you. Thanks. Um, it's a bit like a live webinar. It works particularly well because it enables prospects, students or even alumni to be having a, a regular dialogue with yourselves. We have a live streaming team at Emerging Communications where we can help you with that. Can go on to the next slide, thanks. For those universities that don't want tactical help but actually just need a roadmap, and there are a number of you I know on this call that I've spoken to, we are opening up our sessions with Rocky and myself. We had five sessions, but they got fully booked two weeks ago, so we're opening up more. If you would like to have an hour with a consultant to talk through where you're at, Rocky and myself are going to make ourselves available for a day next week, so please email afterwards. Um, can you go back please, sorry. Um, and what we're doing is for those that need more of a consultancy package, we are offering after that call, 
if you want um, us to help you with more of a sort of roadmap and KPI setting. So for those universities that already have an in-market team are happy that they're doing tactical delivery, but they're not quite sure what their differentiator is, where they sit in the market. This is one of the questions by one of the um, attendees, which I'll answer in a second. So where you sit in the market, where you as a university might compete in terms of experience as a student or in terms of what courses you're offering. And we can do this by looking at previous data as well as marketing intelligence, as well as a number of other means in order to position you as a university so that you're saying the right things to the right um, students and alumni and your other stakeholders at the right time in order to push through your 2020 and 2021 recruitment. So please get in touch afterwards for that. If you can just move on to the next slide where um, what I would suggest is probably the easiest thing to do. I have access and so does Rocky to info at emergingcoms.com. After this webinar, if anybody wants time with a consultant, so myself and Rocky namely, then we will be booking those in for next week. If you haven't booked one already, please feel free to email. And I will be running a podcast next week. Perfect time for a train to come past. My sincere apologies. I will be running a podcast next week for anybody who's interested talking specifically about the integration of Chinese and British teams across departments, how to go about it and how to go about it quickly and what it means in terms of success and hitting your KPIs. We've done it for so many universities and proven that it works. If you'd like to sign up for that, also please make yourself known on info at or follow me on LinkedIn and feel free to message me. I'm now going to open up for questions and myself and Melody to give Rocky a little bit of a rest and um, we'll be answering those questions. And I have yeah. one question that I'll answer first, Melody, um, yeah. from Louise Nicholl. Hi, Louise. Um, so Louise Nicholl has asked, um, her question was, we would be interested to know how you presently encourage higher education institutes to differentiate their, their offer via reputation, ranking, student experience and employability. So Louise, this one is for you. Um, this kind of comes back to what I was saying, which is the most important thing for a university to recognise is to take objective advice as to where you actually sit within your competitive set and within your market. The worst thing for a university to do is to believe that you as a university are the best university that there is across everything from rankings to reputation to student experience to employability and that you are working within a competitive set. Now I know most of you wouldn't do that but you need to basically work with either somebody like ourselves or with objective advice not necessarily those on the board and to work out where you as a university can compete. What are your USPs? How do you differentiate yourself? Um, and what are the key reasons why students would study at your university? And one of the best ways to do this, and you can still do this while everybody is in isolation, is to ask your existing students and your alumni, why did they come to you? What was the experience like? And what has set it apart from them? So that's what I mean about objective and not subjective. Don't presume that as a university board, that you actually necessarily know those answers, ask the right questions to the right people, ask your agents, ask your alumni, ask industry, because it could be employability, it could be safety, you could have a university that is in a very, very, very safe area. I mean, for example, out of London at the moment, it could be a good thing, or it could be that you are have a real beautiful outlook. We have a, a university that's right by the sea. I mean, that's a stunning location, and it's something that we use as one of the USPs for that particular university. There will be certain faculties that you do really well in, in terms of rankings, and you might do really well as ranking as a university as a whole. But really, it's about having a picture as to where you as a university can compete within your competitive set and it could be right the way down to where we or you as a university are targeting your students are you targeting tier two three cities what cities are you targeting in china with what courses and with what message 
it needs to come right at the top of the funnel, right the way back where we were talking about road mapping and differentiation as you as a institution or as a college or a university. It's being very clear how you can compete so that the roadmap, the content, the channels that are used, the messaging and everything is consistent around that. And you focus on your USPs. You don't focus on where you are weak and be very aware of where your weaknesses are so that you can have a plan for that also. The other thing I would say is about differentiation. It's actually about how you deal with your existing students, your alumni and the community. So how you manage your community on WeChat, how you manage messages on Weibo and how um, and when you deal with um, any issues you might have on social media. So social listening is pretty critical to establish what your stakeholders actually think of you as a faculty. So that's again comes back to objective insights as opposed to subjective insights. Very, very important. Um, there is more and I'm more than happy to set up a call with you, Louise, to talk about um, this in more depth. But I hope that's given you some insight to the answer to that question. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dominica. So we open this uh, time for any questions. So please feel free to submit your question on the chat box. Um, I have two questions here. So first of all, um, if we don't have any uh, Chinese speaking staff, how we can engage with our current student or prospective student? So I'm happy to answer these questions. Um, so in a way, I think we are hoping um, you are able to leverage your own Chinese, uh, current Chinese students and then working with them as your Chinese ambassadors. So we do work with a number of universities. They actually prefer to leverage their current students as a way for them to help engaging with uh, prospective students um, on the social media because they are the true voice of your university. They understand uh, univers university, your environment, they are the best way to engage um, the prospective students. So that was, that would be the first way to do it. Obviously happy to engage with us uh, if you need further support in terms of how to engage and uh, if you require any support on copywriting, translations, um, we are here to support you as well. So second question I have here is, um, so this is, uh, I guess, everyone very, very keen to understand a bit more. Um, so how we can currently do um, to convert offer holders uh, to students? So this one, uh, I will also answer if, or oh, Dominica, do you want to go or I can? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy to answer it. I would say that um, one of the biggest surprises and shocks to us as a team is how many universities base their KPIs on offers and then they go clap clap we've done really well that's great and that's because there isn't enough integration between teams and quite often the digital team will have one KPI and then the international team will go we haven't actually hit our KPI um, so the first thing is is to be aware that really your KPIs should be about students accepting offers and not about offer holders and to be aware that students have on average seven to nine offers for a UK university. And so the conversion funnel from converting those offer holders to students is probably the most important part of your sales funnel and is often overlooked. So nurturing that funnel, ideally through WeChat, ideally through one-on-one -on -one conversation with your sales teams and your marketing teams in Mandarin is absolutely crucial. The sorts of questions that we see when we are managing platforms are all sorts of things. They could be really tactical, like I have a car, where do I park it? Or I have an exceptionally large bed, how big is the room that I'm going to be in? Or I have a pet. So they could be around student life, they could be very, um, very detailed questions around the course. And in the current situation, it might be, can we start online before we, we, we come into the country? Or what support will you give me online if, if, if we're still in a quarantine situation? The questions tend to change throughout the sales funnel and throughout the calendar, but they're obviously all very much focused on Corona at the moment, um, but they're also gonna be about student life. So making sure you nurture that funnel right the way from when you have an offer. 
most universities I speak to are either on Microsoft Dynamics or Salesforce, which does not integrate with WeChat. So be very aware of how you are nurturing that funnel and who owns that data within your organization and who is answering what and when. Um, we had an awful situation with the university a year or two ago where there were so many applications that they sent out a message from their sales team in China saying, really sorry, we're really busy. It'll be a couple of weeks before we get back to you. That is absolutely, totally the wrong way to go about it. A, not surprisingly, those students went elsewhere. We then got involved, we dealt with it, and we managed to convert them back. But the fact is, it's really important that you get back to the inquiries really, really quickly. You nurture that funnel, you make them feel good, and you continue to nurture your existing students as well. I hope that answers a little bit. There is, there's a little bit more to it, but it's absolutely critical that, especially for those on the call now, we're talking about 2020 recruitment, as well as January 21. So it's absolutely crucial now that you focus your efforts on converting your offer holders. Thanks, Melody, I hope that helps. Okay, um, so I think that's uh, pretty much everything for today. As uh, Dominica mentioned, uh, we are extending our one-on-one -on -one consultation section that's booked up quite quickly early on but uh, will be uh, available to book through Eventbrite as well as info ads. So it will be uh, great to speak to our education experts uh, based on your circumstances to provide you more tailor-made solution. And uh, this, uh, we will follow up with uh, email with uh, additional information, including the packages and also the podcast uh, Dominica mentioned. So absolutely. And if anybody has any um, ideas as to any other podcasts or webinars you'd like us to run, we're more than happy to do so. Um, the one thing I would say is everybody on this call, you're all very different with different unique selling points, different differentiators, different issues, challenges, as well as opportunities. And we have yet to find a university or a faculty or a college where we can't find USPs. And some of them have been quite tricky. Um, and so I can assure you, we will always find a differentiator um, in order to make sure you stand out. And it's highly competitive out there. So it's all about focusing on your strengths as an institution. And <clears throat> please reach out after this. We're, we're here to help. Um, our team are here to help. Our education team are, are very, very buoyant and busy and education continues in the current climate so feel free to reach out we'll help whatever we can i hope you've enjoyed this morning we will be doing more and you can find details of our events webinars podcasts and videos are all going to be um promoted and hosted on my linkedin page so look out for me on linkedin i'm happy to answer any questions afterwards and have a lovely morning and take care and be safe thank you thank you